I just want to, uh, I think every, um, almost every week in this last six weeks, especially, but I know even more than that, um, I've come to Sundays with a praise report uh, about something that was happening in daddy's life, particularly in these last six weeks when he's been so ill. Uh, so first, before we start, I just want to say, I, I, I'm just so overwhelmed because my whole family is here, actually, including Nawaz and the children from uh, from Melbourne and Ajit. And uh, only my mom couldn't be here. She'll uh, hopefully come. But it's just, it's so wonderful to be able to give praise with my family and my spiritual family, because this is what has really held us together. Um, but like I was saying, I, I, every week I was... I was coming here and I was sharing something that God had done. And I think last Sunday, uh, actually middle of the service, my mom felt that dad was going. And so I'd left service midway. And I just felt today, and that's why I asked, I requested to there if I could have a little bit of this time, because I just felt that uh, today more than any day, I wanted to come and give thanks and praise. Um, because, you know, sometimes in your grief, it's... Yeah, it's easy to forget what God has actually done, but he has been so utterly and completely faithful, just that the songs I've sung over these years have come to be so personal to me and to us as a family in this time, good, good father, the goodness of God. And I just, um, so just want to share a couple of things um, that have been so real for us. Um, I, on the morning that he passed away, he passed away at about two o'clock in the morning. Um, I came for morning um, worship. That was the start of our new season and 6 a.m. worship. And I remember uh, Swati, I think, was saying, you know, how did you do it? And I realized for me, it was no strength or no great thing. It was like the equivalent of my getting into bed with, you know, and putting a blanket over you and hiding away or your comfort food. You go to your comfort food. For me, it was that. It was coming into that place of my comfort zone and my comfort food and just coming to be in a place that had, has sustained me, um, him, his presence, and this fellowship that has sustained me through this time. Um, and we were doing Psalm 42 with that verse, you know, why so downcast, O oh my soul? Uh, um, why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise you, my God and my Savior. And as I there taught that psalm, I realized that for me, I was actually able to say that. And it was my psalm because it was, we had been through those waters. We had been through those calamities. We had been through all of it, the, the, the devastation and all of it. And he had been so faithful. So I want to just share specifically, you know, how... Um, when Rinelle prayed today, it was like just too much because she used the same words that for me I had, I wanted to share of how he has been Yahweh provider, Yahweh Yire, Yahweh Shalom, a peace we have never known, healer, shepherd, God of the angel armies. Um, and um, the first thing he provided for us and he revealed his love to us was through this praying family. This, this, this spiritual family that has sustained us right from the beginning. And I remember many, many years ago, I think it was 2007 when dad had his first big episode of some suspecting cancer and we were in the hospital, in the hospital room, he was going in for the biopsy and we were, the doctors had told us he, they were sure it was cancer and pancreatic at that. And I remember I just, I was so shaken. I was so fearful. And uh, in the middle of that, Uday just called and he said, I'll pray with you. And he prayed and he prayed specifically two things I remember, uh, Rohi and Rofi, and I'm confused which is shepherd and which is healer, but he prayed about Rofi being God being our shepherd through this and healer. And straight after that, mom came and said, before dad left, let's say the Lord's, let's say the 23rd Psalm. And we prayed the 23rd Psalm with him. And it turned out to be not cancer at that time. And since then, really, everyone who has just come alongside us and prayed. I mean, I mean, I know I was sending out prayer messages sometimes thrice a day. He's great. No, he's bad. He's, and, you know, just, it just, it was like I just got a message back every single time saying, praying, there with you, you know. 
So that was the first thing he he just showered us with his love through the hands and hearts of his people and my family. Um, of course, the doctors and the medical care. Um, I want to say specifically that you know I had specific fears, and I, I and some of them are really silly and small. but they were big fears for me and i've carried these fears with me for a long while especially as i knew that you know things were getting difficult um one of them was that you know dad would you know s- suddenly go and all alone and you know we wouldn't know and nobody would have been there with him that was one the second thing i feared and i know this is silly but i just feared like what will i do with the body after he dies what will i do i don't know anything to do i know he's taught me but i don't know what to do i've forgotten you know how will i manage that the third thing was how will i manage the funeral i don't know the first thing about church and i don't remember here and i, I won't be able to do any of that and the other thing was like nawaz and all were in australia especially through this time they were so far away from us they couldn't be with us here and i kept thinking god in the lockdown you know they won't even be able to come and be here you know and i and you know it's just like how will we manage all of these things you know i had all these and they, i carried them with me even though you know jesus very clearly says stop worrying about tomorrow of course i didn't listen to him and i nicely worried about it and i want to tell you like in the way he provided he knows our needs before we he had provided everything so my father went at 2:40 in the morning with all of us around him and the day before that thanks to zoom i will be eternally grateful to zoom whether they're chinese or not i'm so grateful to them because thanks to zoom all of us nawaz anand ava ari um akila my cousins here of course but even my cousin in america sanjani rani we were all around him but the more specific thing was maya maskarinis a doctor my dearest old friend but her parents of my parents friends and you know that she, she i called her for something completely random which was a drip which never worked but she came every day that week and that evening when we knew he was going she came she said yes he's going it's going to be a couple of hours and we said okay she said i'm coming back and i said how can you come back at 12 alone i'm coming back she came back at 12 at night and she said go to sleep i will call you at the time when it's time and thanks to that we would have just been sleeping otherwise and missed it you know we would have woken up to find him gone 215 she called me and she said it's time and i called everybody and we were all literally around him and we were just there with him and he went you know he just went surrounded that was my first fear and god did it in a way i couldn't have imagined my second fear was that about the and at the evening i was telling sanjay my cousin i think you know there's a nurse here i hope he knows what to do with the body i don't know what to do and he said why are you mad your father has taught me my uncle deepu aunty's husband when he passed away my father your father taught me i did it so i know exactly what to do just don't worry about that and then he took care of every detail of the funeral all those grave and all of that he took care of and nawaz and anand the whole day before that we were together with dad right through you know just we all went to sleep at the same time we all woke up at the same time and the next morning we were together across the seas we were able to uh, plan the funeral service together I, i don't know in one hour he gave us everything you know that we had to do and we could just put it together zoom was there people could be there uh yeah so it was just like every single detail he had already he was yahweh yire to us every single detail and we felt his presence so strongly in fact that morning and sent me the most beautiful message uh when we were when i didn't know whether we would didn't know whether he was going or not and she just sent me this message in which she said mm, god be so near to all of you if dad's time is coming he's going to a much better place the boundary lines are falling in pleasant places God fill your dad with joy in his presence from Psalm 16 and we were there together so I shared it with Nawaz and Noel and they sang a song and then we just told my dad everything we wanted to say to him and we said everything we thanked him we even told him okay now go don't worry we're all here we you know we'll we, we'll be fine we'll take care of mom uh, we were able to say all of those things to him and I um what was so precious was that after he died 
uh, we had our first worship night that day and um, I was doing, I was preparing for that. I was doing half an hour a set, half an hour set. And while I was preparing, I was had some songs and I suddenly had, I can only, only imagine, but I felt it was too personal to me. So I just messaged Uday and I said, Uday, is it okay if I do this? I don't know. You just said it may be too personal. He said, just do it. And I'm so grateful to him for saying that because when I did that song, Rahel sent me this message. During I Can Only Imagine, three times I got the image of your dad going into our father's arms that were wide open into such a big embrace. I want to use the word embrace instead of hug because that's what it felt like. And she said, and every time that image flashed, I burst out crying. That's Rahel. <laughs> and I, I just, it was like, God saying to me at every time I would ask him, Lord, tell me, Lord, if I've done the right thing, have we done the right thing? Have we done everything that we needed to? And every time he responded to me, the first was when he died, I said, Lord, did we do everything? Did we miss something? Whatever. And I got a message from a friend of mine, Kirtana, who just said, when my father-in-law was dying, your father came to the hospital and said, take him home, pray with him, sing with him, surround him with love. And I thought, oh, God, that was daddy telling me, stop it, Pervin, you did everything. You know, it was like God really sending me that message. And so I just want to say, you know, we prayed so much. We prayed for a miracle of healing. And I, I know God didn't heal him physically in this world. But I know that he is, I know that he is with God. And I know that the miracles were, all of these were his miracles in our lives. You know, he just, there were so many miracles. And so when we had to pick a song to sing, it was just the goodness of God. And if I look at everything that Nawazi did and put together of that funeral for the funeral service, it was just praising him because we could do nothing else. And just now I sent a message to Nawaz saying, oh, please pray up to speak. <laughs> please pray for me. And she just sent such a beautiful message back. She just said, we have to tell what our Abba father has done for our father. So that's really, I hope, which I've been able to just share with you. I just want to end by saying that the day after he passed away, uh, I went to sleep and I, I think that's the other thing that I've always felt that I'll never, I don't know how I will I'll ever deal with it in, in reality when it actually happens. And um, of course, I imagined all kinds of things. But that morning, I woke up with a peace that I cannot even, um, a peace that I cannot even explain. It was a peace in my body, my mind and my spirit. And it was not that there was no grief because there was terrible grief. I was seeing his glasses and his watch and all of that. But uh, I knew that morning that the peace that I had was that peace that passes all understanding. And that was only that shalom peace from God. So, um, yeah, I just want to say he is so good. And I am, we, all of us, and I'm not just talking of my just my immediate family here, Akila, my sisters also here, and all of us, Deepu aunties here, my cousins are here, my mom has just come. I think we all of us are just so grateful and thankful to God for having given us, A, first of all, given us such an amazing husband, father, uncle, brother, friend, doctor, um, all of that, but also for just having been so faithful to us through this time. So I'm sorry I've taken up time, but thank you so much. Thank you, God. And I thank you. Yes, of course, Mama. Mommy wants to say it. No. I don't know all of you yet, but I, I, I just can't believe how sincerely and lovingly you have all prayed and supported us during these difficult days that we've had. So I just want to thank you very, very, very much for all your support and all your blessings. And I'm so happy that Irving is a part of this this congregation, or I don't know, I really don't understand this, but I'm just so thankful, so thankful to each of you and all of you for all your support and prayers. Thank you. <laughs>